For the uh, camera, I'm going to use some nested nulls to uh, make the animation a little bit easier to set up. I'm going to first of all create one null, and I'm going to call this um, camera position. I'm going to hold down shift and add another null as a child and call this camera rotation. And then I'm going to hold down shift and add in a camera. Um, this camera, I'm just going to reset the coordinates. So it's a world zero as well down here. So what we can do is we can use this camera position to kind of, he says, um, to pull our camera up and down the line. We can use this camera rotation to, um, you know, rotate the camera around. And then we can use the camera itself, um, the Z parameter, to kind of pull it back and zoom in and out. Um, so that just makes it really easy to control all those different elements. And you can create some nice moves that are nice and smooth um, really easily. So first of all, let's grab our camera position. And I'm going to, on frame zero, set that to be minus 2,000. I'm going to select my camera. And I'm going to set that to be, say, minus 5,500. Let's make this the active camera. And you can see now we're looking down the um, tunnel of iPods or whatever you want to call it. Let's select our camera rotation. And now here you can see we can kind of rotate this around and we can see um, the side of it. So what I want to do is set that camera um, rotation to be like 45 and maybe minus 27 on the pitch. There we go. Um, maybe a bit more. Minus 28, so that we get this nice diagonal of all of our elements. And if we press play, you can see there's our flurry of iPods traveling along. So what I want to do is uh, give us like, you know, a second or so, so that we establish what's going on, and then like zoom straight into a point, and then, um, you know, adjust the angle so that we're looking down the um, line of iPods a little bit more. And this is very similar to a, a real world job that I just completed. And this is where I got the idea for this tutorial. And I used all of these techniques in this project. Um, it was one that I did for uh, Disney. Um, and hopefully it'll be on the Lux website soon. I can't show it to you yet because it's not on air. Um, but the techniques that I used within that project are um, the kind of techniques that we're using in this tutorial. So it's, it's quite good to take a real world project and translate those um, concepts over so that you can you know, use them in your own projects as well. Hopefully some of these techniques will be useful for you. If we come to say frame 30 um, and select the camera, I'm gonna add a key for the Z position here, minus um, 5500. Um, and if we then say, okay, how do I want, how long do I want that, you know, that zoom in to be, we can make it pretty quick, like less than a second, um, say 15 frames. And let's set this to be minus 1000. So we're, you know, much more in amongst the um, iPods, as it were. If we also animate the, um, the camera position null, we can animate that moving along. Um, and we can also animate the rotation. Um, let's just do the rotation first of all. So again, I'm going to come to frame 30, select my camera rotation, and I'm going to add a key for the heading and um, pitch. And then I'm going to come to frame 45. Um, and then we can actually just kind of scrub through these values and um, make it so that we're lined up a little bit more. So just going to bring that heading round there. So that's about 30. And let's bring the pitch down a bit. Something like so. Maybe about 15, minus 15. And let's just add keys for those. So now you can see that we kind of start out here. And then we zoom in and we look down. And as I say, we may as well add in, you know, some move on the position as well, um, just to make that camera move a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to start with uh, my camera position at minus 2000 on Z. Let's come to frame 30. Um, and let's just kind of pull this down a little bit, say minus 1700 just so that we have this really small camera move. And you're not necessarily going to notice that with the animation of these things moving as well. But if you um, added in some still elements in the background, then you would see that the camera is moving as well. So it's going to make the shot just a little bit more interesting. I'm going to come to um, 45. Um, and 
and let's move our camera quite dramatically at that point and let's say set this down to I don't know like a thousand so we do this kind of zoom in and the camera pulls along um, there we go like so and again let's just um, add in more of a position move let's set that to say minus 500 and add a key and now you can see that we're kind of moving all the way through that shot and as I say if you put something that's still in the background um, y you know you should see that there's some camera move throughout the whole shot which will make it more interesting I just want to come to my F curve um, and select the um, the curves that I've just made now I think these are okay they're just going to be basically easy in and out it's just this camera position I think might need a little bit of work let's just have a look yeah so you can see we don't really want this ease at the end and I don't want it here what I want to do is point this so it's almost pointing at the next key and this one as well so we get this kind of linear move between the keys and then a very subtle ease into that faster move so you get kind of something more like this And there we go. So you've got like a kind of linear move up to here and then a zoom in here and then more of a linear move here. And there we go. And you could also muck, muck around with like the um, kind of focal length of the camera and make it a bit more interesting if it was a bit wider, for instance, at this point. So, you know, maybe you go to um, a wider lens. But I'm not really too worried about, you know, the quality of the animation. Um, this tutorial is more about the exchange and stuff like that. So once again, I'm just going to save the project. Let's drag this spline into my scene null, just so I can tidy up the scene a little bit. I'm going to grab my camera and hold down control and drop that onto my camera layer, just so that I have everything onto the appropriate layer. Now it's a good time to add in a couple of lights. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is add in um, a lens flare in After Effects. You know, what kind of a project is it if we don't have some groovy lens flare? So I'm going to use a light in Cinema 4D to work out where I want to position my lens flare. So I'm going to add in a light first of all. I'm just going to call this flare. And under the general tab, I'm just going to uncheck diffuse and I'm going to uncheck specular. So this light doesn't actually illuminate the scene at all. Um, it's simply there as a kind of position guide. Um, I want it quite a long way off in the distance. So let's just set the coordinates for the Z to be like say 5000 um, and you can see there it is over there now we do need to bear in mind safe areas and stuff like that even though this isn't really a real project um, and you can see that light hopefully you can see that as I scrub backwards and forwards and it's a bit over to the edge so um, maybe I'll bring it a little bit closer say 4800 um, and of course we could just translate these values over to After Effects but because we've got that groovy After Effects exchange then we can use that to just simply carry this light over and we can use that position information with um, you know our third party effects. Um, I'm going to set the Y to be minus 200 just so it's a little bit lower and I'm going to grab the handle and just pull it across so that it's you know maybe uh, 1300 something like that somewhere around there so it's a little bit more central on the screen and just want to check that it's still there through that move yeah because I want that lens flare to you know work with my camera and you can see that that light here is um, still visible throughout the whole shot it'd be nice as well if we have it at this point so that it's kind of behind the um, the clones and we can use the alpha to sort of hide the lens flare and stuff of course, lens flares are a little bit cheesy, but the whole point of this is just to show you that you can use um, these features to take data from Cinema 4D to After Effects, and that's a, you know, it's a great effect that you can use to demonstrate that. Next, I want to add in some lights that are actually going to light the scene, and I'm going to um, first of all add in a target light, and I'm just going to call this Key. This will be my key light, and I'm going to switch to the General tab and set this to be an area light. I'm also going to set this to have um, an area shadow. Now if we look at the options down here, we have an option here for separate pass. Now this means that when we use um, certain multi-pass settings, we can output our lights as separate render passes and it gives us even more control than we um, had in the previous example because we can control each of our lights individually. So we're going to use this for this tutorial. So I'm going to make sure that separate pass is 
also enabled for this light. Um, let's make this light a kind of warm orangey yellow color. Um, we can always adjust this a little bit in post. Now let's just press F5 so we can see all of our views and I'm going to zoom out a bit. We have a light target and I'm just going to grab my key light and just kind of pull it over so it's behind the camera and pointing at the uh, right hand side of this kind of line. And let's just have a look from some of our other views. I don't want it too high up. Yeah, there you go. That's not too bad. Just something like so. Um, let's just set this to be a garage shading so that we can hopefully see the effect of our light. And there we go. So let's just grab this and call this um, fill. I'm going to switch off the shadow for the fill and I'm going to switch off specular. I'm going to make this a bit more of a bluey kind of color, something like so. And I'm going to set the intensity to be a little bit lower as well. I'm going to set that to be about 70. And um, we want this to be hitting the areas that the, the key light isn't really hitting, just so that we can define um, the shape of our objects and we don't have um, any you know, really dark areas. So I'm going to pull it down so it's below and I'm going to um, kind of just pull it back a little bit like so. So it, I'm just going to put that key light a bit more to the side. So the key is sort of hitting the side and the fill is kind of coming up from underneath and hitting the back of these. Um, something like so. Let's get, There we go. So you can see there's my key. There's my fill underneath. And I'm pulling them quite a long way back because it's quite a wide or a long line of objects. And I want to make sure that these few lights that I'm adding are actually, um, you know, hitting all of the objects in that line. You know, I'm not taking too much time over this, as you can tell. So I'm going to take my um, fill, actually, and dupe this again. Let's just call this rim. And we'll add a little rim light to this. And I'm going to make this pure white. Um, and I'm going to set the intensity to be um, like maybe 150 so it's quite bright and I'm going to put this almost like pointing at the camera if we just come to that top view so you can see that and there we go so but I want it to be back here past the end of this line so that it hits all of the objects in that line because I'm not using any fall off with these lights really jamming these lights out pretty quick um, and let's just pull this rim up so it's just sort of sitting just above our objects Let's have a look at the scene here. Switch back to um, high for our level of detail and let's just do a quick render and see if we uh, can see any big problems. There we go, so it's kind of illuminated, nothing amazing, but it's a quick job. And you can see that we've got like the blue at the back of these and we can see our key light hitting them and hopefully um, our rim as well. If we jump to the beginning and just like render again and make sure that even at this frame we can see all of our objects illuminated. And there we go. So that looks okay. Um, cool stuff. So that's like a really basic lighting setup done. I'm just going to drop these onto um, my lights um, layer. We're almost ready to um, output this. I think we should come into render settings and um, you can see these are the previous settings that we used. Now I'm not gonna output any object buffers this time around. I'm gonna output my ambient diffuse, um, specular, shadow, reflection and refraction passes. If we select the multi-pass options, you can see up here we have um, a parameter called separate lights and we can choose all or selected. I'm going to choose selected and I'm going to choose mode three channels so it outputs a separate channel for each lights diffuse specular and shadow. The selected option for separate lights means that um, the multi-pass renderer will output only for the lights that we have selected to separate pass where we've enabled this checkbox. If we uh, chose all it would output a separate pass for every light in the scene. Now, for instance, I've got this flare light, which isn't actually doing anything, so I don't really need all those empty files. And we will have some empty files anyway, because we're outputting the diffuse, specular, and shadow 
um, and we don't have the option to specify which lights we'd like to do that on. Now you can have them all combined into um, a single kind of blended um, render but I'm just going to output that for a separate channels for each light and even though the fill um, has the specular disabled and it doesn't have a shadow and same for the rim light it's only the key light that we really need all of those passes so we will end up with some empty renders which is a bit of a shame but there's um, it's either that or um, output them blended or don't have them separate. What this essentially means is that where we have our separate multi-pass channels ambient, diffuse, specular, shadow for the diffuse and the specular and the shadow we will have um, a separate render for each of our lights which means you can then control your lighting in post a lot more you can adjust how bright it is and you can adjust the color temperature those kind of elements on top of that i'd also like to um, save my uh, external compositing file but i'm going to do that shortly afterwards so i'm just going to uncheck save on here for now because there's a few other things i want to set up in the scene now my Output is set to linear color space because we are working with multi-pass and my document has linear workflow enabled. Um, I'm going to enable alpha channel and I'm going to come down to multi-pass image and I'm just going to um, put um, a file name in here. I'm just going to call this um, C4D to AE advanced and then the um, version number of my scene which is actually um, 13 here. Okay, so I'm using Photoshop 16-bit, of course, use whatever format you're more comfortable with. Um, and now I can just set this up and um, I'm going to render it over NetRender. While that's rendering, I'm going to come back and um, add some extras into here for um, the exchange options because I want to um, output some information based on some of the iPod positions. 